Hello, Keith here, and firstly, Happy New Year to everyone. This is the December 2022 update on our solar and battery installation and how it's performed in the first winter month since its installation. And yes, we still have battery issues. The issue is still not resolved, although the Christmas break has understandably impacted resolution timelines. And some of you with the same type of install, which is a Solis inverter and Pylon Tech batteries, uh, you've mentioned that some of your batteries are now charging following resolution work by their own installers. My own installer has emailed me on the 23rd, so just before Christmas, to actually confirm that Solis believe that there's been an issue with some of the control parameters, meaning that the false charge function has failed to engage, and that in turn leads to batteries going into hibernation. So they believe that they have confirmation that the issue was caused by inverter settings. So frustrating, uh, it's definitely down to a firmware update from what I understand. And at this moment in time, my installers are working through the customers that have this issue and trying to attempt to still resolve the issue remotely. So I'm hoping I'm soon in the queue. Also, since the last update, I've updated the spreadsheet that I was using to create the graphs that I use in these updates. Uh, my initial plan was to create a 2023 document uh, that I could make available to download uh, for those that would be interested in using that. However, unfortunately, I found a few errors uh, in my original document, so I've hopefully corrected those. Plus, I also wanted to show the export as a minus value uh, in the graphs. So as an example, this is uh, an updated usage chart for September last year, and that's now showing the export values uh, as a negative value, as it's obviously um, energy that I'm not using, um, but obviously exporting back uh, to the grid. And here you can see October's values as well. So again, now adjusted to show uh, the export as a negative value. And finally, November last year, and I think with the export data now showing as well, you can now see the impact of not using the battery and where the access was sent to the grid. Thankfully, not too much given the time of year, and we are now getting paid uh, for that export, although not that much as November's export income was the grand total of £1.96. But so, on to the November 2023 update. Um, and just to reiterate, we're slightly off a north-south alignment. Uh, and over the year, you can see the position uh, of the sunrises and sunsets changes with the season. So that means we get more sunshine hitting the panels over the course of the year. And we should get solar generation at the height of summer between 5 a.m. and 9 p.m. due to our orientation and the surrounding environment. And you can also see with the track of the sun throughout the year, uh, then the length of the solar day, we should get consistent solar generation throughout the year, and that's limited only by weather and the seasons in terms of the length of the solar day and obviously the strength of the sun. So did the first winter month since our installation show any savings at all? Well, surprisingly it did. Not a huge amount mined, but bear in mind we are now in the winter months. So let's see what we got to. So midway through December, uh, if we take the 15th as the midpoint and based on the data from timeanddate.com, the sun is rising in the direction of the southeast at around 7.56 in the morning and it sets around 15.47 in the afternoon in the direction of the southwest. There is only seven hours and 51 minutes of daylight on this date. And when you compare that to the 15th of November, there is again an hour's less daylight uh, and this is only six days before the shortest day of the year. At midday, the sun is only 12 degrees above the horizon, so again that's eight degrees lower than November the 15th in the previous month. In terms of the weather, it wasn't nearly as wet as November, um, but it was extremely cold at the beginning of the month. Uh, we did also get quite a mild period from the middle of December onwards and we've had around 13 days without rain, so much improved compared to last month. And in terms of solar generation, we actually averaged around 2.68 kilowatts per day uh, and we did actually manage on four days to generate over five kilowatts. Our worst day uh, was actually the 4th of December 
which incidentally is the lowest uh, performing day since we had the system installed where we actually only generated around 100 watts that day. Our best days were the 6th and the 14th of December. On both days we generated 5.6 kilowatts. But of those two days, uh, the 6th was probably the best example of generation, plus we also exported some power back to the grid, which we do now get paid for. So of the 5.6 kilowatts that were generated, we used 4.6 kilowatts and we exported one kilowatt to the grid. As you can see, we have no battery data, plus another symptom of the battery issue is that we now only get data on the Solis Cloud interface only when the solar panels are generating, so we don't get the import data for the rest of the day in this particular view. But from my energy provider, Octopus Energy's their own dashboard, uh, we can see that we imported 5.29 kilowatts so that means on this day we used 19.43 kilowatts in total. And then that means that our energy usage on this day consisted of 21% solar energy and 79% grid import. And here is our electricity usage split between grid import, battery usage, solar usage and grid export. In case you can't see, the blue is grid import, the grey is battery usage. The orange is solar generation usage and the green is export back to the grid. Uh, as you can see the 10th was our best day in terms of the split between solar generated usage and grid import with 22% of our energy being directly from the panels. Our best export day was the 26th of December. Uh, as we were out of the house during daylight hours our electricity usage was low meaning that we exported 2.5 kilowatts back to the grid. And here is the split between solar generation usage in terms of panels and battery, although obviously the batteries aren't working at the moment, and grid import for the month. As mentioned on the previous graph, the 10th of December was the best day in terms of split between solar generated usage and grid import, with 22% of our energy being directly from the panels. Overall for the month, we only had 11% of our total energy usage on solar generated power in December, but again, that is down to the time of year. And the time of year really does play its part. Um, someone mentioned in the comments how they had a similar west-facing only installation and how the performance was disappointing at this time of year. So I've tried to display it graphically, and this is a crude representation of our house orientation uh, and how the, the sun tracks across the sky at uh, various times in the year and it has been a while since I did GCSE science at school. But during the winter the sun is much lower in the sky and as such the sunlight is not as strong. Factor in as well the shortness of the solar day and it's not going to be hitting the panels at the best angle. Although the panels will generate from daylight on cloudy days as well so it's not all bad in that sense. However they will not perform as well as in the summer. We do also have quite a shallow pitch to our roof as well, which will also be a contributing factor. During the summer, however, the solar day is much longer and the panels will be in direct sunlight for the longer periods of the day, as can be shown by the arc uh, around uh, the base of the house. The sun is also higher in the sky, so the sunlight is stronger. So we will generate for longer during the day and at a higher rate as the sunlight is stronger. So for us in particular, we are taking advantage of the late spring, summer and early autumn months to maximise our generation in the knowledge that in the middle of winter our daily generation will be significantly lower as generation performance can never be a constant. So overall for December 2022 we saw 11% uh, of our electricity consumption was through solar generation and we generated overall 83 kilowatts of electricity of which we used 69 kilowatts and exported 14 kilowatts. Our grid import cost for November was 216 pounds and 28 pence and that was for 509 kilowatts but our generated usage would have cost us an additional 24 pounds and 21 pence so our total cost if we hadn't had solar generation would have been 240 pounds and 49 pence based on our total house usage. We were also paid 
uh, for our export up to the 27th of December because that's the way our bills fall. Uh, so we were paid £3.68 for that. So the performance overall is to be expected as I explained in the uh, previous graphics. We're now getting further into winter. The days are short and you know, there's less likely solar generation, more likelihood of cloud and rain and, and so on. So there's less opportunity uh, to generate as opposed to later in the year. But in terms of our costs so far and savings, uh, this chart shows the overall electric costs uh, for the year ending 2022 and the savings that we've made from solar generation. So again, as you've seen previously, for the first eight months of the year, we were relying solely on grid import. So our total grid cost for the year is £1,744.17, but that would have been £2,034.60 without our solar and battery system being in place based on our total energy usage within the house. Our total solar generation to date has been 911 kilowatts of which we've used 899 kilowatts and we've exported 113, 114 kilowatts back to the grid. And obviously you'll probably notice that that comes to more than the total generated amount if we add those figures together but do remember that one we've had the battery issue um, and also those batteries were delivered with a parcel charge and then were topped up to a minimum state of charge where required at various points and they're now completely drained so we've taken everything in terms of energy out of those batteries. So that's overall where we are up to the end of the year. Uh, next month we'll give an update on how the systems performed in January 2023 uh, and it would appear that our battery issues should hopefully be resolved soon based on the experiences of other users of solid inverters and pylon tech batteries. So I'm hopeful that by the time I do the next update we'll be up and running with fully functioning batteries again. Um, I'm also planning to do an overview of that Excel template in the next week and make that file available for download. I uh, just need to work out how I can get that up and running for you. Uh, but as always, let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you'd like to see and whether you found this video useful. Uh, and if you have, please do like and subscribe and I'll see you all for the next one.